the night you know you in trouble ain't nothing but a chem thing baby, baby. too flipped out teachers going crazy. crazy lancaster is a district that pays me unbreakable so please don't try to break hey. this but uh back to the lecture at hand accurate precision <laughs> Like Some it. weird audio that I'm gonna take can you just this out. That? Can you just do that though? No? I think you should leave it. Hello and welcome to another edition of Shu Fu Review for You. Shu, where are you? I'm right here. What? Why are you hiding? Well, I'm using my new invisibility cloak, obviously. Well, why would you be using an invisibility cloak? I'm trying to hide from the math. Like it or not, ladies and gentlemen, mathematics of formulas and equations. The mathematics of formulas and equations, key concept one. The sum of the atomic masses of all the atoms in a formula is called the formula mass. Now, when finding formula mass, you have to look up the atomic masses of all of the elements in that compound on your periodic table. Now, the masses for each one of those elements can be found in the upper left-hand corner of each element. Now you also have to remember that when you are finalizing your atomic mass calculation, you have to multiply the mass of the atom times the subscript for that substance. For instance, MgCO3, for the oxygen, we would have to multiply the O's mass times three before adding it to the total. The mathematics of formulas and equations, key concept two. Formula mass is used to convert between moles and grams of a substance. When we're doing a conversion, we have to decide what conversion factor we're going to use. Both conversion factors will involve the formula mass, but where we put the formula mass might vary. So for example, if we're converting between grams and moles, we're going to divide by the molar mass to cancel out grams and get moles at the end. If, however, we're converting moles to grams, we're going to multiply by the molar mass to cancel out the grams and get left with moles. The mathematics of formulas and equations, key concept three. The percent composition of a substance is calculated by taking the atomic mass of the desired element, multiplied by its subscript, and then divided by the formula mass and multiplied times 100. Now, the percent composition formula can be found on table T of your reference tables. You take the mass of the single element as the part and the gram formula mass as the whole. In our example of MgCO3, finding the percent of oxygen requires that you multiply the mass of oxygen times three to get your part, and then divide by the formula mass of MgCO3 as the whole, multiply it times 100 to get your answer. Now all the percentages should add up to 100 at the end. The mathematics of formulas and equations, key concept four. Empirical formulas represent the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a molecular formula. Molecular formulas can be determined by whole number multiples of the empirical formula. Let's say you are asked to find a molecular formula. You will be given the empirical formula and the molecular mass. First thing you want to do is find the mass of that empirical formula that's given. Then you're going to divide the mass of the empirical formula into the given molecular mass, which is the mass of the molecular formula you're trying to find. You will get a whole number from the division. You will finally multiply the subscripts of the empirical formula by that whole number, and voila, you've got your molecular formula. The mathematics of formulas and equations, key concept five. The unknown quantity of a reactant or product expressed in moles, number of particles, or liters of a gas, can be determined by using simple proportions that use the coefficients of the balanced chemical equation. Now, when we need to convert from moles of one substance into moles of another in a balanced chemical equation, we simply use the coefficients to help us do that. Now, in the example, we've got ammonia and oxygen in our balanced equation. Now, we use the coefficients of ammonia and oxygen to get our answer. Now, in this particular example, we are given 11 moles of ammonia, and we have to divide by the four moles of ammonia and multiply by the three moles of oxygen to determine our answer of 8.25 moles of oxygen.
we never are for we zone to the brick of dawn s-e-i-e-n-c-e in the hall they call s wing you know we never wear a tie like my homies boys two men it's so hard to say goodbye like, like this that and this and uh it's like that and like this and like that and uh it's like this you're going in low power mode plug in chill to the next episode